Sometimes there are these situations where you wrote a piece of code, but it just ever so slightly feels too clunky, in case you are out for writing expressive and good looking source code. Take this example right here. We receive a sorted list from a called method, but we only need the first three elements of it to display them in a ranking. How cool would it be to avoid this ugly code that just doesn't feel right? Three extra lines for nothing. But there's a remedy. Let's check out destructuring declarations in today's episode of Idiomatic Kotlin. I'm going to highlight what they are, how they can be used, and we're going to look behind the scenes such that you can make use of them in your own custom classes. Instead of just dipping one foot, let's jump right into the cold water, shall we? The code from the introduction can be easily improved in Kotlin by changing it to this. Maybe you've seen this notation before, but what is going on here? This is a destructuring declaration, meaning that we destructure or take apart the data on the right hand side of the equal sign into multiple distinct variables on the left hand side of it. In the context of any ordered collection, such as our list here, this simply means that the first variable a will be bound to the first element of the list, b to the second, c to the third, d to the fourth, and uh, no way, well you get the idea. All we have to do is add two parentheses around our variables, separating each with a comma. As with any other variable, we can specify its type manually or let IntelliJ and the Kotlin compiler do the work for us and infer it. By the way, if you don't know how to get these handy dandy type hints behind the variables to stop the guessing game of what type each variable has, check out the following short linked in the top right corner right now. I'm showing you there how to quickly make use of this in your own IntelliJ IDEA or Android Studio. But back to the action. This feels a bit like black magic, doesn't it? Let's first check out which other data structures within the Kotlin standard library support these features and what they will return. As mentioned already, when destructuring any Kotlin collection that has an order to it, you'll get each element starting from the beginning. So a set won't support it out of the box, which makes sense to not cause any confusion. The next good candidates are the pair and triple classes, which will intuitively return the elements they hold. And here's another cool feature of the destruction declaration. It can support any type and is entirely type safe, such that a pair of long to string will be automatically destructured into, well, that same long and string due to its parameterized nature. Next, any custom data class that you created automatically supports it as well. In this case, the values are returned in the order of declaration, so be careful with this one, specifically if you created a data class that for instance only contains four different strings representing some data. As you can see right here, Kotlin would not be able to match values based on variable names alone, but for data classes, it will just always return them in the order of declaration. And finally, a map entry that will, you guessed it, return its key and value in that order. This is potentially where this rang a bell for you already earlier, as this is commonly used in a for loop over a map. That's right, that's why it's called destructuring declaration, as it is not strictly tied to traditional variable assignment. Keep in mind that there are plenty of other types in the Kotlin standard library that support this. Now you might wonder, how can I know which those are? To answer this question, let me pose a new one. How can I use this myself? The answers are, let me show you, and let me show you, so I will guess I show you now. This Kotlin feature is a bit of a weird one, as it is solved both on the language and implementation level. How it works is that when writing a destructuring declaration with the parentheses, Kotlin is looking for a bunch of methods that the 2B destructured value has to offer. Those are the component methods. They are named component1, component2, etc., and simply have to return something. Of course the contract is that there is some logical ordering to the return values, but ultimately it is up to the class itself. Note that this is not an interface such as comparable or serializable. It's a feature of the language specification itself. The reason why it's not an interface you'll see in a moment. Instead, Kotlin simply matches up that if we specify three such target variables for our destructuring, that component 1, component 2 and component 3 have to be invocable on the right hand side source value. Now if you want to make use of this language feature yourself, all you have to do is implement these methods on any of your custom classes as such. The important thing right here, however, is that the functions have to be marked with the operator keyword, such that Kotlin knows that this function has a special meaning to support this built-in language convention. If you leave it out, it's simply a function with the same name. 
Doing this, there can be cool use cases if a custom class you created has a logical ordering to its values. Ah, I know what you're thinking right now. And yes, this enables us to reduce this sexy looking code right here by swiftly implementing component 1 through 26 within our spy collection from another episode. But just because you can, doesn't mean you should. This is ultimately also the reason why this feature is on language specification level and not an interface with a thousand methods, I can only guess. Two final notes. This feature is also supported in Lambda expressions, such that we can use our class like this, if it is the argument of the expression. Moreover, in case you do not need any of the destructured values, to avoid namespace clutter, it is a good practice to assign it to the special underscore variable, which will cause it to be discarded entirely. And that's all there is to the structuring in Kotlin. If you have any further questions about it, let me know in the comments. If you ever implemented the component methods in the past, or if ideas came to mind now to do so in the future, let me know in the comments likewise. Apart from that, consider subscribing to the channel for improving as a software engineer in general and leveling up your Kotlin skills in specific. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and share the link with other Kotlin developers you know. It would help me immensely. Thanks for watching and I see you again when we are looking at more idiomatic Kotlin. Tschüss!